In the beginning, God, the love of our souls, the source of goodness, truth, and justice, a perfect kingdom of love and light. Until war broke out in heaven through one fallen angel who broke God's perfect law, Lucifer coveted God's throne and authority and deceived one third of the angels to rebel against the Holy One. Since that time, Earth is a war zone where the forces of light and darkness, good and evil, truth and deceit battle it out in a life or death conflict. Are you just a spectator or have you taken sides? Are you living the victorious life God intended for you to have? Let Marla Alona guide you through the truth of God's word that you may choose right, that you may have life and have it more abundantly, and that God's truth may bring you eternal life. Welcome to Setting the Record Straight, God's Truth for This Generation. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. In today's program, we'll be discussing a mass phenomenon that's taken over the world and is especially concentrated in all of the large cities. Homosexuality, same-sex attraction, and same-sex marriage are on the rise, not only in numbers, but also in influence and decibels as their voices get louder and louder in the political and social arenas. Roughly 5% of the U.S. population are homosexuals. We all know that a couple of months ago here in the U.S., the Supreme Court ruling made same-sex marriage a right nationwide. Same-sex attraction is being encouraged for political, economic, ecological, and spiritual reasons. But that alternative lifestyle puts gay men and women at great risk with regard to their health. Gay activists seldom talk about the enormous health risks and the lowered life expectancy of gays. I'm going to set the record straight on many of the lies that are being told to push the gay agenda. But most importantly, gay men and women are also children of God. You were not born this way. You can come back to who you really are, which is who God created you to be. I'm not here to condemn you but to bring you hope that change is possible. Let's get started. Gay Economic and Political Power Pink money is the term used to describe the gay population's disposable income that's available for spending on goods, services, and political donations. In the U.S. in 2013, this pink money amounted to $830 billion, with another significant amount of pink money circulating in the U.K. economy. Because most gay people don't have children, they usually have higher disposable income than heterosexual couples at the same income level. Over 90% of gay people support businesses that target pink money and actively shun anti-gay companies. Global companies across all industries are seeking growth through the gay market. In the past few years, pink money has been one of the top sources of campaign funding for the Democratic Party in the U.S., and several presidential candidates have actively sought these votes. Only last month, Target gave into pressure from the LGBT, which stands for Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Community, and Target announced its decision to remove all gender labeling from the children's toys and bedding departments. The LGBT lobby is also putting increased pressure on government, and we've seen more and more state laws passed. For example, in California in 2013, the state established the Transgender Student Rights Act. According to this ruling, children can choose which school bathroom they go to depending on how they're feeling on any given day. If they're feeling like a girl today, they go to the girl's bathroom. If tomorrow they feel like a boy, they go to the boy's bathroom. There have been attempts to repeal that law, but as far as I know, it's still in place. Given the current trends, it'll just be a matter of time before most states come out with some kind of legislation to completely blur all gender distinctions. Since 1984, most states of the Union have added sexual orientation and gender identity to the hate laws. This means that any person who criticizes gays, 
lesbians, or transsexuals may be accused of violating a hate law with all of the ensuing consequences. Population control. Agenda 21 is the United Nations Global Depopulation Program. Their goal is to reduce mankind's ecological footprint by reducing the world population from the current 7 billion to only 500 million. That's a 90% reduction. A significant portion of that reduction will come from the U.S. and Europe. What does that have to do with homosexuality, you wonder? It has everything to do with homosexuality. Homosexuality is a non-reproductive lifestyle. This is a fantastic way to control population as part of the objective to drastically limit human reproduction on the planet. If you think I'm delusional, I challenge you to do your homework. Agenda 21 is a broadly communicated UN document. It's been debated by many different groups in large public forums. This is no conspiracy. It's all out in the open. UN Agenda 21 is a product of the emerging One World Order, and it's shaping the decisions and lawmaking of governments across the world, in particular the U.S. government. Social Engineering The U.S. is currently a consenting lab for social engineering experiments to encourage homosexual and transgender lifestyles and behaviors that ultimately contribute to population reduction. Most people believe that the gay and transgender agenda is all about freedom, freedom to choose whom to love and freedom to marry whom you will. What they're not seeing is the long-term deliberate plan and strategy of the ruling elite. In the New World Order, LGBTs are nothing but a statistic, and their supposed freedom is only a means to an end. The LGBT agenda is being imposed even on preteens, with teachers in middle school teaching about homosexuality and transgenderism. Not only is the government trying to promote homosexuality in public schools, there's also a very insidious blurring of genders going on. Children in their formative years are being led to believe that they get to choose what gender they want to be. Imagine being 10 years old and being burdened with the potentially life-altering decision of choosing whether you want to be male or female. That can create huge levels of emotional stress and trauma, let alone if they choose to be of the opposite sex than the sex they were born with. It's been a few years now since I left France and, and came back to the U.S., but I am still shocked at the levels of gender confusion I see here among the young people. This human landscape is not normal. When I go into a store, I see the teenagers and young adults working there, and often I honestly don't know if they're male or female. Young people in other countries are nowhere near as gender confused as the young people in this country. And if it's up to the new world order and the ruling elite, it will only get worse. This is social engineering at its most tragic. Physical causes of homosexuality. Whether there are physical causes of homosexuality or not continues to be a much debated topic. But this is the net net of the research I conducted. Number one, there is no scientific evidence of a homosexuality gene. Therefore, sexual orientation cannot be considered a genetically transmitted characteristic. There have been eight major studies of identical twins in Australia, the U.S., and Scandinavia during the last two decades, and all reached the same conclusion. Gays were not born that way. Identical twins have the same genes or DNA. They're nurtured in the very same prenatal conditions. If homosexuality is caused by genetics or prenatal conditions and one twin is gay, the co-twin should also be gay. But the studies have found that this is not the case. Because identical twins are always genetically identical, this means homosexuality is not genetically transmitted. The causes of homosexuality in one identical twin and not in the other must be post-birth factors. Same-sex attraction is caused by non-shared factors, 
such as events happening to one twin, but not the other, or by one twin having different emotional responses to the same event. Number two, there is some emerging evidence of the effect of hormones and other modern toxic substances, such as phthalates, that may affect the formation of the fetus in the womb and may alter the baby's brain and even genitals. However, there's no reliable estimate of what percent of the homosexual population might have resulted from those types of physical causes. Emotional Roots of Homosexuality I've read and listened to a large number of testimonies by gay men and women. In an overwhelming majority of cases, there are common characteristics in their backgrounds and family histories. For gay men, one of the top shared characteristics is a lack of closeness and or a lack of identification with the father. Most gay men didn't have an emotional bond with their father. The father was severe, cold, distant, neglectful, or the father disapproved of them and even rejected them. There was a big need for emotional acceptance and affection from the father that was never met. Most gay men also describe feeling inadequate in their manhood or their masculinity when they were young. They didn't fit in or they felt they didn't fit in and therefore could not connect well with other men. These gay men felt that they didn't and couldn't live up to the male gender stereotype. They didn't feel manly enough. They had a sense of being an inferior male and never felt equal to other males. Their testimonies also reveal that because they were not able to develop into their male role, when they entered puberty, their need for affection and acceptance from other men became sexualized and got projected as a sexual attraction. They weren't able to go out and engage with men socially in normal circumstances and settings and therefore had to seek that interaction through sexuality. Some of these men compensated for the father's rejection or lack of affection by becoming excessively close to the mother and thereby developing a very feminine psyche. And of course, certain men have been raped or sexually molested at a young age, or others have been exposed to pornography at a young age, and all of this, of course, uh, has distorted their sexual development. For gay women, often their father role is weak with a father who's either sick or absent, even dead in certain cases, or a father who is abdicated from his role as head of the household with the woman taking over. This leads young girls to feel a lack of respect for the male role, and all of this is just emphasizing how important the role of the father is as high priest of the home, something that's emphasized in scripture. So the young girls end up feeling a lack of respect for the male role. That doesn't make the male role a very attractive partner. And the female role is honored instead of the male role. Other typical scenarios include an abusive father, abusive towards the mother and or the child herself, and sexual molestation at a young age. That makes the child frightened of men which leads them to seek comfort and protection from another woman, whereby women are perceived as safe partners. And of course, there are other women um, in a scenario similar to gay, a lot of gay men who suffered from an emotionally unavailable mom and that caused them to seek affection from other women through sexuality. Obviously, there will always be exceptions, right? But these patterns do emerge clearly from a large number of testimonies of gay people. But now we're adding on the 21st century cause for homosexuality, which is related to some of the things we mentioned earlier, societal pressure or peer pressure. A few months ago, I was looking for a podcast to listen to, and I came across a podcast by Jillian Michael, the famous fitness trainer, and the podcast title was Trendy Gay. Trendy gay is quickly becoming a cultural reason why people become gay. They want to fit in with the crowd and they want to be accepted by the crowd. You're listening to Setting the Record Straight, God's Truth for This Generation. The Gay Lifestyle. 
The gay trendsetters pretend that it's all about living the gay lifestyle. Let's take a look at that. Most gay people will admit that the choice of living a gay life is fraught with stress and that same-sex relationships are very volatile. Same-sex relationships between men break up at twice the rate of heterosexual relationships. Sexual promiscuity is one of the problems in gay couples. 66% of male gay couples reported having sex outside the relationship within the first year and nearly 90% had sex outside the relationship after a few years. The most important statistic to consider, however, has to do with life expectancy. On average, the life expectancy of homosexuals is a staggering 20 years less than heterosexuals. I'm sure your gay friends aren't telling you that. They may not even be aware of it themselves. I can't even begin to tell you how many friends or acquaintances of mine who were gay passed away, most of them in their 20s and 30s, and a few in their 40s. Why is there such a gap in life expectancy between gays and heterosexuals? It's because same-sex sex is counter to nature. Our bodies were designed to have intercourse with the opposite sex. When we engage in sexual relations with people of the same sex, we put great stress on our bodies and put them at high risk of damage and disease. Not long ago, a group of six Canadian gays filed a complaint with the Canadian Human Rights Commission, accusing the nation's entire health care system of homophobia. They demanded that more attention be given to the many health issues that are endemic to our community. And what do you think those endemic issues are? Well, here's their list. Lower life expectancy, higher rates of substance abuse, depression, HIV, AIDS, anal cancer, and suicide, plus higher rates of breast cancer and cervical cancer among lesbians. These Canadian activists say, and I quote, gay and bisexual men have a life expectancy 20 years less than the average man in Canada. Even the life expectancy of lesbians, though not as severely impacted, is still lower than the life expectancy of the general population, partially due to the higher rates of cancer that we mentioned uh, earlier. Suicide rates, these same gays admit, are anywhere from double to 14 times higher than the general population. By their own estimates, homosexuals comprise 30% of all suicides in Canada. They admit that smoking rates among gays are up to three times higher, alcohol use up to seven times higher, and illegal drug use up to 19 times higher than the general population. If your gay friends are not warning you about all this, do they really love you? Health Risks of Same-Sex Sex God designed us perfectly, but when we step outside of His plan for us and engage in activities our bodies weren't designed for, we damage our body temples, and the end is usually tragic. Listen to this Bible verse in Romans 1, 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. In other words, there is a penalty that is due when we do damage to our temples. What is the penalty of their error? There's a very long list of diseases and syndromes found with extraordinary frequency among male homosexual practitioners, and this is as a result of anal intercourse. Some of these are sexually transmitted diseases, and others are the result of lowered immune response. Male sperm is designed to lower the immune response so that the female's reproductive system won't reject it and will allow her eggs to be fertilized. Because in same-sex intercourse, the male sperm is being deposited in a canal that isn't prepared to receive it, 
it lowers the body's immune defense. I won't read you the entire long list of all of these illnesses and syndromes. You'll find it on our website. And some of the things, as I said on this list, are not actual diseases, but are syndromes due to organ damage. Number one, AIDS. The risk of getting AIDS is 44% among men who engage in sex with other men. And you need to know this statistic. Since the discovery of AIDS in the 1980s, two-thirds of homosexual men infected with AIDS have died. Anal cancer is another one. Anorectal trauma, anal fissures. Uh, then there are some um, diseases here that are a little bit obscure. Let me just read some of the more common ones. Herpes, human immunodeficiency virus, human papillomavirus, gonorrhea, viral hepatitis types B and C, syphilis, hemorrhoids, gay bowel syndrome, hepatitis A, um, salmonellosis, pediculosis, scabies, human herpes virus 8, and Kaposi sarcoma, which is another form of cancer. God doesn't want you to have a tragic life riddled with disease or to die young. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Listen to this passage in Ezekiel 33, 11. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Turning away from the gay lifestyle change is possible. Homosexuality or transgenderism is not who you are. It's not who God created you to be. Male and female, he created them. He intended for man to be married to a woman and for a woman to be married to a man. For this purpose shall man leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. You're hurting yourself physically, emotionally, mentally, and even socially by choosing to be in this alternative lifestyle. I'm sure at this point you're thinking, I didn't choose this. This is stronger than me. I can't control this attraction. I don't know how to stop feeling what I feel. Let me tell you this. There are many testimonies of successful change, many more than your gay activists would have you believe. Men who thought they were hopelessly homosexual marry, and have children, marry women, I should say, and have children. Women who identified themselves as lesbians walked away from the lifestyle, from the sex, the drugs, the friends, and started a new life, and they are successful. If you want to change, you can change. The God I serve is a mighty God. With him, all things are possible. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. What is required is a true desire for change, a firm decision to change, and the determination to stick it through until you get the victory. Setting the record straight. If you're a Christian and a practicing homosexual, you're outside God's will for your life. It is not okay. Don't believe any pastor or any teacher who tells you that God doesn't care. He does care very much. I'm not condemning you. I'm just telling you the truth. I love you too much to lie to you. I want you to be saved. It may not be easy to find a church where you can be uh, helped because many, if not most churches, aren't really equipped to minister to gay people to help them return to a normal sexual orientation. And it is true that you'll encounter condemnation in many churches simply because the issue isn't well understood. You know, uh, sometimes we need to have thick skins. Uh, but you have to walk away from a church that says it's okay to be a practicing homosexual because they're not teaching you the truth. There are many scriptures that clearly state God's view on homosexuality, and I'm sure you're familiar with most of them. Okay, you want to change. How do you even start? If your heart is telling you that you're ready for change, what do you do next? Number one, pray. Truly surrender yourself, your life, and the problem to the Lord. Tell him that you really want to change. Ask him to help you. The battle is the Lord's. When you surrender the battle to the Lord, it becomes his battle. Number two, stop all sexual activity until you're fully healed. 
I know this is going to be the hardest part, but you have to stop. You cannot continue sinning against God and asking him to help you. This is how God will test your sincerity. Number three, if at all possible, learn to fast. Fasting is one of the most potent weapons in spiritual warfare. Fasting is an, ex is an accelerator as well. There's a demonic element in homosexuality. Most homosexuals are not demon possessed as I define possession. But there are several levels of demonic intervention in homosexuality. Let me give you uh, some examples. And, and you have to learn to fight against this demonic intervention. When you were a child and having all of those unmet emotional and developmental needs, demons were around you. Demons are around all of us. They told you lies about yourself, that you were rejected, not loved, that you're inadequate or you're flawed, not good enough, not worthy of affection without giving yourself as an object of lust. When you believed their lies and became an active gay or lesbian, your behavior opened the door to more demonic influence. When we sin, we give the enemy the legal right to enter our lives. As a result, the enemy is wielding some amount of control over your life. This is why it's so important that you surrender full control of your life to Jesus so that he may fight those battles for you and defeat the enemy on your behalf. As long as you're holding something back, Jesus will not fight the battle for you. Then when you decide to change, you're going to face demonic opposition. They're, they'll harass you. They'll torment you. They'll lie to you and say you can't change. They'll discourage you when the going gets rough. They'll try to make you backslide, feel defeated, but you can't give in. You cannot give in. Number four, should you get deliverance? This is tricky. My own experience with so-called deliverance um, has been quite negative. Most people out there who claim to be in the deliverance ministry are actually on the other side. Some because they're witches in disguise and others because they're inadvertently being used by demons. I had a few, not many, but I had a few deliverance sessions go uh, really bad and ended up with the problem getting much, much worse than it had been initially. And therefore, the painful lesson I had to learn was to trust in the Lord and wait on him. If you pray and fast, if you disengage from the gay lifestyle, you start serving the Lord and diligently seeking him, he will send you the prayer warrior or the man or woman of God who will deliver you. Or he may even take care of it through some intercessor that you may not even know and you may never ever meet. This is one of the ways in which I was finally able to experience true deliverance. Number five, join a church where they teach the truth and start serving the Lord. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. You shall be healed by the grace of God and the power of his Holy Spirit. This is what I speak and I declare over you. You shall be healed. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are a new creation in Christ. You are more than an overcomer through him who loved you. And for the rest of us, for all of us, the legalization of gay marriage across the U.S. is a flashing neon sign, a huge prophetic sign. Marriage and the Sabbath were the two institutions that God created in the beginning before sin. We're now witnessing the destruction of marriage as God created it. Next will come the trampling of the Sabbath through and for Sunday worship. The reversal of everything God established at creation, everything that has been recorded in the book of Genesis will have been accomplished. And that means that Jesus is coming soon. He's even at the door. Get ready. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away.
Thank you for listening to Setting the Record Straight, God's truth for this generation. If you've been blessed by this program, we encourage you to share it with others. To ask any question related to this Bible study or any other spiritual matter, email us at info at citybiblegroup.com. To find out more, visit our website at citybiblegroup.com. Hi, I'm Marla Ilana. Thank you so much for studying God's Word with me. Please click on the subscribe button below and you'll be blessed with many more powerful truths for our generation. Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready?